Welcome to the lesson. Today we're going to dive deep into the funky bass line from Trombone's version of the absolute funk classic Fire on the Bayo. I've already made a lesson on George Porter Jr's um, bass line from the original Meters version, um, but once I've found this um, Trombone Shorty version on YouTube, I haven't stopped playing it since. His trombone solo on this track is hands down one of my favourite trombone solos of all time, and the real bonus of this track is that it's got the classy Nathan East on bass. So whether you're a bass player who wants to learn some new techniques, or you simply love a good groove, then you've got to listen to this version of Fire on the Bayo. I've transcribed the whole Nathan East bass line note for note. You can get that on a free PDF in standard notation and tab by clicking the link below this video in the description. So get your copy of the PDF now, grab your bass, and let's analyze this epic masterpiece. At the beginning of the song, we hear this catchy bass riff that immediately pulls us into this infectious groove. Um, so it's the same riff as the original. Just based on D, C, D, okay? Um, but later on in the song, Nathan East actually plays that down the octave. Okay, so this song really is perfect for a five string. Um, but if you haven't got a five string, just play anything that's low on the B string up an octave. But I'll talk more about that as we go through the lesson. I'll now analyze different sections of the bass line and show you what's different from the original version. The intro is quite sparse. We start with the riff, as I said, and then we've got a really nice slide. Okay, so we're sliding from D right up to that D. Okay, sometimes these slides are quite tricky. You've got to really land on this note. So I would suggest that you just keep your eye on that uh, the note that you're landing on, just know where it is. So it's on the dot here, the second dot after the 12th fret. So, and then we slide down a bit. Okay, um, so you just need to practice that one. It's a bit of an eye to hand coordination thing with that slide. And then Nathan East just does these high kind of C's to D. Okay, so he kind of slides with a, it's called a grace note, slides up to the, up to the D. You can kind of do a shake if you want. You've got to do that quite fast for that to come off. Uh, it's a little bit tricky on that G string there, but it kind of works when you play it with the track. And there's just variations of that C, the next one. And the next one. Okay, so it's just based on this kind of really high C and D. And then we come in on low Ds here, just on the beat. Okay, so again, you can play those up the octave if you want on the D there. Okay, so that's just kind of warming up uh, while trombone short is talking. Um, so it's just sparse there. Now this section is extra. Um, trombone short is singing, do you want to make it funky? Okay, we've got a different chord progression there. We've got a bar of D minor, a bar of B flat, bar of G minor, and then back to D minor. Okay, we're just we're playing the kind of main groove there. Okay, um, Nathan East actually plays that high C there, but you can just do. Okay, and then just um, root notes on B flat. And then G. Okay, G, F, G. And then the riff again on D. And then we've got this nice walk up on the five string. Leading to the chorus, all right? Um, so that's just a four bar section. Then we're into the chorus. Um, so as I said before, this is played down the octave, and Nathan East actually plays a longer note in the middle like this. Okay, starts there. Um, whereas the original version, George Port Jr., he's just playing them short. Okay, so it's longer there, it's just fatter, okay, especially on the um, B string. Okay, so from this point onwards, um, for the bulk of the song, we've got chorus, verse, chorus, verse. We've just got that main riff, but Nathan East puts loads of variations in, so I'm going to show you those now. If you're enjoying this video lesson, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by clicking the red subscribe button in the corner of the screen, and if you click the bell and select all, then you'll get notified as soon as I bring a new um, piece of bass content out. So I'm now going to show you some of the licks that Nathan East plays. He plays loads of them. I'm not going to show you them all, but I'm going to show you some of the general ideas behind where he got these licks from. So you can then kind of make up your own licks. 
So one of the things that Nathan East uses are hammer-ons. Um, if you look here on bar 20 and bar 35, he just does his hammer-on. Quite fast, it's just C, D. So you pluck the C and then hammer on the D. Okay, they're really effective at the ends of bars. Then we've got some pops. Uh, look at bar 55, we've got one of these hammer-on ones. Okay, so just pop that. And the next bar, okay, and those two bars, okay, so it goes down to the, the higher D there. You could actually slap that as well, okay, and then, okay, they're kind of offbeat there. So I'll play it from the beginning. Okay, uh, they're really offbeat there on C's. Another place is bar um, 22. So we've got a, we've got those shakes. Now everyone does them kind of differently. Uh, you could do it as a trill, so just really fast or, or like that, okay? It doesn't really work um, slowly, but when you're playing it within the bass line, um, it kind of just sounds a lot nicer, okay? Okay, um, so there's pops all the way through, so they're a really good technique to put in. You can just put a quick one in. Okay, just do it syncopated off the beat. Nathan East puts a lot of um, harmonics into the first verse. They sound great. He's kind of playing them here. Okay, so fifth fret. That's a, that's a G. That's a D. And that's an A. Okay. If you haven't played harmonics before, you're just resting your fingers lightly uh, on the fret. You can actually take it away as well. Okay, they, they're quite tricky to get in quickly. You just have to practice them slowly. So the first one he does sort of D to A. Next one. Uh, he does there G to D. And then he does a really quick one in bar 32. He's got to stop the note. Okay, and in bar uh, 44, he does the whole lot. So from bar 43, so. Okay. So they're really effective. Uh, if you've never played them before, just practice them. They're good, they're good in, on this fifth, fifth fret here. Okay, and the um, ninth fret as well on the two up fret. Okay. Depending on what key you're in. Quite a few of the licks that Nathan East plays are based on the minor pentatonic, the D minor pentatonic scale. Um, so if we look in bar 38, those notes, okay, that's just a D minor pentatonic, you can do it this way. Oh. So it uses all those notes. Uh, goes in the next bar, goes to the D again. Okay, and that was kind of shake. So again, when you're going up to that D, you can kind of do that or slide. Everyone's got their unique ways to do it. It's really hard to copy exactly that Nathan East thing. Um, but another place he uses the minor pentatonic is... Okay, that's bar um, 48. So... Just the first two, three, four, first four notes of the minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so that's a really important shape. It's always going to work. Um, major or minor keys. This is a minor key, but it will work. So um, just what I recommend for this is just learning the scale. Okay, um, and then just you can kind of create your um, licks out of um, that pentatonic scale. You could kind of maybe do it here. Okay, then you've got some options. Okay, you've got some options for creating um, your own licks. I think my favorite lick in the whole thing is bar 34, okay? Okay. Okay, again, that's sort of minor pentatonic thing. 
without the top notes. It's just kind of going chromatically up. Okay. Okay, so that's a really nice um, lick there. Just take that apart and have a look at that. Sounds really effective in the song. Nathan East plays a load more licks in the bass line, but hopefully that's given you a good idea of, um, of the type of things that he plays and where the ideas came from. Um, it's very busy, this bass line, but it works so well with this high energy track with the brass and the, and the big band. And um, So yeah, just um, he's, a, he's a real master to learn licks from, Nathan East is. Then we have Trombone Shorty's solo, which is just amazing. Um, there's a first part of eight bars, and then it kind of goes into a um, ascending pattern that gets um, repeated. So the calls for this section are D minor for two bars, a bar of B flat, and a bar of G minor. So it's similar to that bit of the start of the intro, okay, the same chords. Um, first of all, I love these kind of octaves that sound really fat. B flat. So and that's a that's a tenth. Okay, so that top note there is the third um, up an octave. Okay. So so um, you hold down the low note as well. Okay, so he's doing a lot of octaves there. Held down with the root note. Then we've got this rhythm. Okay, so they're all even, the gaps are all even uh, between these notes, but you kind of get off. Um, so um, when you hit the kind of one, two, three, when you hit the seventh one, that's off the beat. Um, so you've got, you're kind of in a different place than you think you might be, okay? So it's kind of three, four. And that's one there, okay? So it's a quick one at the end. Three, four. And another tenth there on the B flat. Okay, so to play these these rhythms here, I would just lock in with the band. So try it with the track. Um, just keep the notes even and then um, just remember that you're not on the beat. So then you just play this quick B to get back um, with the next bar. Three, four. So those kind of grooves, I think personally, are better just to feel them rather than to count them. Uh, it, it's too hard to count them quickly, um, but just get a feel for it, listen to the band, and then try that rhythm yourself. Then the next bit, we're just ascending up. Uh, we've got this pattern here, which is basically the pentatonic, but with the second note of the scale. It was this kind of minor, minor sort of scale. So with these notes. Okay, with this pattern. Okay. Okay, remember it's the same chords again. Um, so really just learn those notes. And the same again. Okay. So same notes just stacked on top of each other, okay? And then after that, back to the B flat. Okay, so we've got that um, that tenth again. And then back, back down to um, G minor. So they're relatively simple, these G minor bars. And it just repeats that four times, um, but just varies it slightly, okay? Um, the second time. And again, we've got one of those really nice slides. You slide from G up to G. And the next one. Okay, when he plays a nice little grace note, which really stands out, it's so classy. Two here. Okay, on that A. Or you could slide into it. You could play the C there if you wanted to.
okay? So that's the, um, that's the main kind of part for the um, trombone solo. Then we've got the bridge. This is the same um, idea as the original meters version. Okay. Again, that's the minor pentatonic, okay? Notes from the minor pentatonic. So. You'll hear that on the original version. Now, it's a really cool thing. It's actually really hard to play coming up. So that's there, really nice there, on the high D. Okay, it sounds uh, much better when Nathan East plays it. He's kind of sort of muting it as well. So he's, um, so that that's just brilliant on the track as well. You're sliding into that note each time. Then we just have the outro. Um, so this continues for ages. Um, I've just done a little bit of it on the PDF. Um, so this is where kind of um, Obama gets up and starts chatting. So it's really cool, this bit. Um, so just different variations. Shorter notes there. Okay, so just little bits like that there. So that just kind of jams um, on this kind of on, on the main riff. Well, that's all for today's breakdown of um, Trombone Shorty's version of Fire on the Bayo. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I didn't really intend to teach you the whole bass line. I wanted to just kind of compare it and pick out some of the really classy bits um, that Nathan East played in the bass line. This version is radically different, really, from the original Meters version, which is a real kind of raw funk. Um, it's much busier, this version, um, but I found it really fun to compare them both. The trombone shorty version definitely requires something different from the bass line and I really feel that Nathan East delivers um, in that live version. I really love both versions in their own right, um, but let me know what you think. Have you got a preference and, and what you thought of um, what Nathan East did with the bass line? So yeah, leave me a comment. Um, I check all of those. It's great to read those and get some feedback on the lesson. And also check out my website, which is gbshed.com. I've got loads more bass content there. I've got some merch, you can buy t-shirts, books, video courses. Um, so yeah, check it out, that's gbshed.com. And if you look in the description as well, when you get the PDF, there's loads of useful links in there too. And if you felt that you got value out of this lesson, you can always buy me a coffee, they're $5. And the details at the bottom of the screen there, or you can click links in the description. Don't forget to like and share this video. That really helps me out if you enjoyed it. Um, share it with some friends, some other bass players, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This is Greg from Greg's Bass Shed. Hopefully see you very soon in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.